Hey everybody. It feels great out here today. Um, towards the, uh, the afternoon I came out and got a few little things done and I didn't really have any complaints. It, I mean, it feels absolutely wonderful out here. And it's really weird. I'm, I'm not sweating. I don't feel like I'm going to die. I don't feel like I've got a hair dryer in my face or I'm in an oven. But here's the thing. It's around 10 o'clock. The temperature's still 81 degrees and the humidity is 91%. Yet it feels like it's 75, 50% humidity. I don't know, but I got a lot done. It's been uh, four days since my last video. Hard to believe. As you can see, I got a big old hole in the front of this thing. Um, I have done a lot back here. Whew, this right here, I'll show you this drawing I made before I take it off of there. But what happens here is you've got your prop reversal button and it's actually recessed down in there because the button itself is about a half an inch tall. So Convair, with their obsessive need to make everything perfectly flush, did some really weird stuff here. And I've got these countersink uh, holes here ready for the rivets because if you look on uh, aircraft 522220 and 522827, you could see that there's rivets here, but I don't understand what they're there for. I have a theory which I'll mention in a minute. But before I go into it, right here, this is what you're, this is what you're looking at right here. The three holes are the three switches and the four rivets, which I'm gonna replace with countersink screws for serviceability, because it doesn't make any sense. Go on that flange right there. And that wall right there, it took me forever looking at the IPB, but I realized that that vertical wall right there is actually higher than that vertical wall. That's three quarters of an inch, that's a half an inch. And then you've got this flat area, which I assume houses that uh, button. And then you've got that vertical area. Well, let me show you what's going on here. The first thing I did before I take this thing apart is I've got this entire area done here. This is for the, um, the co-pilot's ARC radio, command radio control, or remote control. So I should be able to pop this right off of here. And there it goes. And that falls off there. And this is all done here. Um, I've spent a lot of time installing these, um, these nut plates. There's a ton of them back here. But I had to spend a half a day lower, or yes, raising this, because it was about an inch too far down. Didn't look right, and it was not acceptable. And you probably notice this guard that I've made. Um, I don't know if the original was a one-piece stamp design. I swear, but I, could, I cannot find it. There's a picture of one, probably at a crash site, of this thing ripped apart, and it looks like it's two pieces, but... I can't afford to buy a $500 bottle of Argon. I'm maybe a cheapskate. So it's made of two-piece construction. You can see it's riveted up there. So take this guy off. All right, and you can see how this thing, and that, mind you, there's no evidence of any screws here, just these rivets. So based on this shape, I incorporated that shape into here. You can see that that top wall is taller than the middle wall. And then this back wall, in order to get this stuff to line up, which it's, it's a chore because this switch is spring loaded, of course. Well, shoot. Pardon me for a second. There. The way this works is, in order to hold that up there, 
that flange sits on that little shelf right there. So when you pop this thing down, that sits on the shelf. And there's no way I'm gonna be able to get that back on there. I've got a picture of this thing exposed and it looks just like that. I can see that nut plate right there. So I know that's there to hold that on there because there's three that go across here. And there's just the ever so subtle hint of a shelf right there. So that's where I got that idea. So I think I'm on the right track. I just want to replace these with screws so you can take this entire unit off because trying to replace that spring or even these three switches would be not very practical. But it's halfway on. Next, turbo supercharger selector. Oh, and I also got that installed. Now, here we go. So I took my original one apart to see what makes it feel so smooth. And the reason it's so dang smooth and feels so good is because this disc sits in between two of these rings and these rings have springs behind them. So they're almost like a break. I think that's like some, maybe a, it feels like cork, but I don't know, it's 80 year old material. It could be anything, but the springs push on that on either side. And that gives it a really nice firm yet sm silky smooth action. It's, it's, it's really nice. And this thing lives flush with the top and it lives right there. And then on top of that, you're gonna have a guard on this side and a guard on this side that has the lighting panel. I have started building my own. It's made out of steel and it is for all intent and purposes in terms of the basic shape and exact duplicate. Tomorrow I'll put the flange on there so you can bolt it in, but this is not gonna be functional. I, I wish I could find an original Honeywell specimen but this is going to give me an idea of how that installs because I theorize that under here, which I'll just take it off and show you, under here there is a kind of a sh like one of these that goes out here and there's another one that goes there and there's four threaded apparatuses here. So I theorize that they took the original Honeywell part and simply dropped it on there and bolted it in on the four corners and then popped the top cover right back on it. And there it is, because that makes sense. Because just undoing these screws, well, that one, the ones on the back, were my rivet plates. And I did rivet plate here, here, there on the E6 controller. But yeah. You just, you know, take these screws out, lift that off, and then boom, you have immediate full access to the turbo supercharger controller, and this would work fine. But that's what I'm doing right now is duplicating this, trying to make it make sense, and we're just gonna keep moving forward. Um, I have the, uh, didn't bring them out today, but I have the uh, switches that tell me that this thing right here that the switches go on is seven inches long. So the basket is seven inches. So I know how big the basket, I don't know how deep it needs to be, but I'll burn that bridge when I cross over it. So it feels great out here right now. I'm not about to die. So I'll see y'all next time.